there's multiple benefits. I'm not going to cover them all, but I'm, I'm sure my colleagues will pick up everything that I missed here. I'd say the first is that there's some enhanced security, really, because they, as you've said, the people are terrible at picking passwords. Humans are actually not very good at being random, it turns out. And so pass keys eliminate the vulnerabilities associated with the passwords, like them being easily guessed or stolen or being fished. But they also remove the need for us to remember complicated passwords or to have extensive password vaults or password safes or notebooks, what we've got. The other thing I'd say is that we've seen broad adoption across the industry here. So we've got companies like Google and Apple and Microsoft who have not historically always been best of friends. They're actually moving to support passkeys, which really is helping to accelerate the adoption and the integration across all the platforms. And they're interoperable. That's, I think, the best part of it is that you don't have your Google passkey versus your Apple passkey versus, because at, at that point, again, if we get into a walled garden mentality, it becomes very difficult to see that widespread adoption, both in the consumer space as well as in the enterprise space, because enterprises are inevitably going to be uh, heterogeneous and you have to be able to support as many combinations as is feasible. Absolutely. I'll, I'll hop in there because I, I think there's an element too where you're not only increasing the security, but it's making it easier for users, right? Typically, whenever you implement additional measures of authentication, whether it's push MFA or something else, or like, you know, temporary codes, it's like, oh, they, there's one more thing that I have to go do now. Yet as a user, it's like, great, I don't need to. I just look, all right, I got my device, right? It's it's already there and, and it's with me. And so that increases adoption because it's actually making my life easier. And so it's one of those rare rare instances where you have increased security while decreasing the user friction and that that helps increase the just overall adoption and usage. Yeah, I think that that's not highlighted well enough for everybody. You know, if you could tell a retailer, listen, I can take a whole step out of somebody buying something from you and make it much faster, they'll definitely say, I want to go do that. If you tell a bank, I can make it much more secure for all of your end users, right? These All of these great things that it brings us uh, we've said that about lots of different products, right? We've said that over the years, lots of times. So what makes this a lot different is it's ease of use and it's a ubiquity, right? That, that point that you made earlier, we can get it to everybody pretty fast and it makes everything better. That's really what you're looking for, right? In security. My only challenge is, is what happens when you lose it, right? Uh, then, then it becomes, oh no, I've got to recover. I just would like to add, I, mean, we, I think that we were starting by looking at this as it's an improvement in security and it's an improvement uh, in convenience, which is which has not always been the case, as Chase was saying. But uh, as we are reaching the point where now the service providers are thinking about implementing what we are starting or have started to implement it, what we see or what they see is an actual benef business benefit. The, the possibility of having a better level of engagement with customers, the fact that users can logging to their services much more easily without finding themselves uh, as we find ourselves so easily in that situation where you don't forget you you don't remember your password and you have to go through a password reset the fact that it's so much easier to log in with a much better success rate i think that makes a difference as well for for service providers yes. let me quick on jason's comment about banks so rebecca just for a, a brief moment so i think that there's a benefit but it's not uh, widely accepted benefit here, and it comes down to risk, and it comes down to risk mitigation and risk management. And ultimately, when you think about banks adopting this, that I, I want to separate this out. There's banks that are adopting this passkeys internally because it reduces the risks of a breach, and they don't have to worry about costs associated with a data breach. But in the that's for corporate employees, and also for a lesser extent um, for uh, contractors. But when it comes to actual consumers, I have a bank account at a, a, a credit union. I have a bank account at a major bank. I have an investment account. None of them support pass keys right now. And right. the reason that they don't, if you think of the way an executive is going to look at a corporate risk register, they're going to say, okay, internal data breach that shows we didn't have adequate security or responsible security or whatever we want to call it today. That's a problem. But if somebody's bank full on gets stolen, right? If somebody just yeets all of your money out, quarter million dollars, insurance by FDIC. Now, is there going to probably be a lawsuit? Is there going to probably be some oversight? Yeah, but they have a compensating control right now. And I right. think where that'll be challenging is for banks and similar industries as well to adopt this out to larger 
populations. I, th I do say though that re retailers, my pet food store, does use pet yes. uh, does use passkeys, and I love them for that. Yes, and we will get on to some of those uh, issues you talked about, Pete, with regard to the risk and the downside. So we will come back to that. I also want to mention too another point. It was mentioned earlier. It was about compatibility because I think the ability to use a consistent, repeatable protocol across all types of technologies is something that currently is not truly out there. So, you know, the concept of passwords is one thing, but yet the actual protocol for how to use them consistently to make everyone as secure as possible is a different thing. 